The first one is we need to embrace the new, the new paradigm. What's the new paradigm? You're dead. If you've trusted Jesus Christ, um, you died with Jesus Christ to the world and to the flesh, and He's going to use that as our theological reality, this new identity that we have of being dead to sin and alive to God in the verses that follow. He goes on and says, not only are you dead, but in Jesus Christ, you are hidden in, in Christ, with Christ, in God. You're hidden. You're secure. You're safe. Listen, whatever else happens, we will probably lose a lot of our freedoms in the days ahead. Freedom to assemble, freedom of speech, freedom of religion. They'll, those things are, will probably, in the next few years, be seriously affected. But the bottom line is this, is that whatever else happens, you and I are hidden in the hand and protective Um, security of God. Right in the margin of your Bible there, uh, John chapter 10, Jesus says, um, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, they follow me, I give them everlasting life, and no one shall be able to snatch them out of my hand, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. Why? Because no one is greater. Listen, you are safe and secure in the hands of God, whatever the crazy things that end up happening in this world. You remember that, that person I told you about she had those two suitcases and she's getting closer to the customs officer. It's like, okay, Jesus, I guess we're both going to jail today, you know, that kind, of, that, kind of, that kind of spirit. Why? Because she knew she was hidden in the hands of God. Friends, we are safe in the hands of the living God. Well, there's, a, there's one last thing I want you to notice there, and that's another indicative statement. So, we need to embrace the new paradigm. We're going to pursue heaven, not things of the earth. We're going to think about things of heaven and not things of the earth, and it'll affect the things of the earth. We got the new paradigm, but here's we got our anticipated future. Friends, again, whatever else happens in the economy and um, uh, with our assets and all of these things that are un- unfolding around us economically, I'm just telling you, our future is really bright. Look at this. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, Jesus is going to be revealed. Right now, He's seated at the right hand of God. Do you remember that? We saw that in verse 1. But when He is revealed, when the heavens tear back, Revelation chapter 19, and it says, Jesus comes on a, on a white horse. By the way, we know the name of the horse. His name is Silver. <laughs> Hi-ho Silver. I mean, you know, come on, you all know that. It's a white horse. <laughs> Haven't you ever seen the Lone Ranger? Come on. All right. And it says the heavens are opened up and Jesus comes on his white horse. And then it says, and it says, then the armies of heaven will come and they're clothed in in white linen, and they're riding on a horse. Listen, if you're afraid of horses, get over it because you're going to ride one if you know the Lord Jesus. It says, when He is revealed, then, then. So, Revelation 19, Jesus is revealed. Then you also will be revealed with Him in glory. Listen, the world can say right now that you're crazy Christians, and you guys are the problem, and you know, you hold on to the Bible and these crazy ethics of of sanctity of life and these crazy ethics around sexuality and these crazy ideas about the nuclear family. And listen, the the world's going to say that we're all crazy, but just notice when the day comes and Jesus shows up, they're going to go, oh my word. And then they're going to look and they go, oh, there's Jack, there's Sally, there's, there's, there's Jera. Oh, I thought they were all crazy. No, we're going to be coming back with the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, friends, the future is really bright because God has a plan. God has a purpose. And we will experience the glory of being with the Lord Jesus Christ in the days ahead. I was thinking about this passage all this week, and and you know, this this idea of thinking ahead and pursuing and and being stuck here right now, you know, and waiting and anticipating. It's hard. It's hard to anticipate and wait. Um, So, Jara and I have been married 38 years, and one of the goals that I had early on in our life was to take Jara on a safari. and, And so, you know, uh, it, it, it was something like that would never happen, right? It never happened. So March rolled around, and a, a situation came together, and I thought, like, you know what? Maybe we could go on a safari. And anyways, and so some, some special things came together, and so I said, Jer, we're going to go on a safari. And so we started getting all of our stuff together, and all, we thought about it, thought about it, and thought about it, and, and like, we're getting matching shirts and matching pants, and we got matching little hiking boots, and like, we are just so darn cute, Right? And, and I mean, I'm like on eBay and we got matching safari jackets and stuff. And it's, it's, it's like so cool. And, um, and, and so we're just, we're looking forward to it. That's what we're thinking about. And we're, and we're moving towards it because we're getting all the pieces into play, right? And then the day comes and we go down to the airport and like, here we are. And we're like matchy, except I didn't get her the backpack because I was too cheap. Now I wish I had. Anyways, 
And so we're going through the airport, and people are like, you two are just so cute. Are you guys like, are you on the amazing race? <laughs> and Jared looks at me, because we've always talked about doing that. She goes, well, kind of. Uh, but no, we're not in the official race. But we're, we're, we're going to the East Cape. And this is something we've always wanted to do. And so we're, we're talking to people. And that was at, at the airport here. And then we flew to San Diego. And, and people are like, oh, you guys are so cute. Are you an amazing race? And they're like, no, but we're going to Africa. And so we're, so we're, te- we're thinking about that all the way through. We, we had to overnight in San Diego. Then we had to get up to San Diego and fly to Atlanta. And then people are saying the same thing in Atlanta and asking us the same questions. Then we got to Johannesburg. And then we had to fly down to Port Elizabeth. And everyone's like, you guys are so cute. Are you an amazing race? All the way through. And it brought me to this, 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 this passage. It's what we were thinking about and it's what we were pursuing and other people picked up on it. And friends, if you and I are thinking about heaven and you and I are pursuing heaven, it will radically transform us in a way that we'll stand out in the crowd. Stand out in the crowd. Be dangerous. Think different. Stand with me. Turn to someone and say, hey, think different. Tell them.